Hey guys, welcome back to another recap of Insecure Season 4. Uh, before I get into what happened in Episode 6, I wanted to share with you guys something that actually happened to me in my personal life that is very relevant to this show. So Condola replied to me on Instagram, y'all. Well, not actually Condola, but the actor who plays Condola, Christina Elmore. So let me just tell y'all what ha happened. I'm gonna have to look back into my phone, get on my Instagram real quick. I was posting my last recap to Instagram and I was trying to tag the actors. What can it hurt, you know, just to tag the actors or whatever. And usually I'm able to tag Christina. It just so happened this time around, my tag was blocked. So I was like, what's good? You didn't like me tagging you before? I mean, all I'm doing is singing praises and like actually defending your character. And I'm just like, dang. I, I kind of felt some type of way. I was in my feelings, basically. So because of that, as a result, I decided to go on her page. And I, this was very impulsive, okay? And I was like, why can't you? Why can't your supporters tag you on IG anymore? You too Hollywood already? Even Issa still lets her fans tag her on IG. Shake my head. <laughs> and then I just left it alone. I looked back at it that same night and she actually replied to me. And I'm like, little old me? Like, why would you even reply to me? I would think that she would just even ignore that comment. So here's what she had to say. Hey there, I manly approved my tags because I was being tagged in photos of my kid and I'm doing what I can to protect his privacy. Not sure that counts as being quote unquote Hollywood. You see, you see how she gave me that little shade right there, right? <laughs> but I'll let you be the judge of that. Feel free to tag me. It just may take a couple days to show up on my profile and little hearts. I was very surprised that she even responded to me and I thought that was pretty big of her and she kind of threw me shade in a very nice way. So I don't know, I kind of like her even more. <laughs> That's what happened there with that. I was like, wow, Condola replied to me on Instagram. I'm just loving my hair today, I'm sorry. So back to episode six. The two main characters of this episode are Issa and Mirabitch, pretty much. When it comes to Issa and Molly's beef, in my opinion, I feel like Mirabitch had a point when she said, Have you noticed that you're always the one reaching out and apologizing? Even their friends expect Issa to reach out to Molly first. For example, like later on in the episode, Kelly is talking to Issa over the phone and she's like, if she doesn't call, y'all just never gonna speak again? Why does that have to be the case? Why can't Molly reach out to her? By the way, I was kind of bothered by a joke, a Dibby dad joke that Kelly said to Issa over the phone. But you ignore me like you're my biological father. Are we really perpetuating stereotypes that, you know, all us black women have Dibby dads? and we linger on to that in our adult life. I know there's a little truth to every stereotype, but why do we have to keep doing that? And the joke was funny, it was funny, but it was like, damn, that's cold too. But anyway, that's just my little two cents. That statistic doesn't define us. Back to that whole apologizing first thing between Issa and Molly. I've been that friend before that was always going back to that one friend apologizing. I actually have one friend that I used to do that with that I'm still friends with. We've known each other since the sixth grade. It really gets old. It has to be reciprocated. You have to know that that person also cherishes the friendship as much as you do and that they actually care and that they can be vulnerable and humble enough to know when they're wrong and say sorry. In the last episode when Molly was trying to give the, her last chicken wing to Issa, when she was trying to extend that little olive branch in the form of a chicken wing, that olive branch was not long enough. A sorry needs to be said sometime soon. I have friends that I, I know they're good in nature, they have good hearts, 
but uh, they do not like to say sorry. And a lot of y'all were on social media trying to figure out what the zodiac signs were for each insecure character. And with Molly, I really think she might be a Sagittarius, okay? Because there's a lot of good qualities she has that Sagittarius have uh, when it comes to ambition, being lucky, like making money. Uh, but they're also very stubborn and they do not know how to apologize. I have a lot of Sagittarius friends that will not say sorry. They might show you that they're sorry, but they do not know how to say sorry. Y'all can fight me on this if you want to. Fight! Fight! Okay, <laughs> but that's all I gotta say about that. In the beginning of this episode, Issa wakes up replaying the argument she had with Molly at the block party. She keeps thinking about how Molly called her a user. As a result, in about half of the episode, Issa spends her time trying to convince herself that she is a good person that also helps people. It starts off with Issa talking to Nathan over the phone and explaining to him why she asked him for help. And she also tries to reassure him or maybe even more so reassure herself that if the roles were reversed, she would help him too if he needed it. Then Issa tries to help out the pregnant woman at the supermarket by trying to buy her groceries, but she doesn't have enough money on her car. Never mind, this just got sad. I think that was definitely a lesson about like only helping within your means, right? Don't extend yourself. Like if you can't do it, don't do it. <laughs> You have to help yourself before you can be a blessing to someone else. Issa needs to get her finances in order before she tries to overextend herself. Her next good deed is giving the hilarious George a ride. When George asked Issa if she had a man looking out for her, I think it was the wrong move for Issa to say no. Luckily, George was harmless, but the wrong person could use that information against her. Like, normally, if you pick a stranger up and if they ask you like, oh, do you have family? Uh, do you have a man? Say yes. Make sure that they know there's someone out there looking for you that, that cares about you, that's looking after you. Come on, that's like 101. Even if you don't have someone looking out for you, make sure they think that you do. And then when Issa drops George off to his destination, he can't even get her name right. I appreciate the ride. Thanks, Issa. Ice, ice baby. But throughout the car ride with George, it seems like he did say something that made Issa start to think. I guess I should have seen the signs that the shit wouldn't last. There's always a sign. I wonder when he said that if she was thinking about Molly. At the Sip and Paint, I was so excited to see Kyla Pratt. I grew up watching her on 101. UPN, boo boo, okay. Also the Proud Family, Disney, that might be coming back, we'll see. And just a lot of other things. Dr. Doolittle with Eddie Murphy, like that's my girl. Some people say I look like her a little bit. I never really saw it, but then I started saying maybe the cheeks, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> do I look like Kyla Pratt or resemble her? One on one. Anywho, then for some reason they made her girlfriends from PG County, which is Prince George County in Maryland. I used to live in Maryland and I have family in Maryland. I have family in that area, Prince George County. I've had a different experience with girls from that area. It's hard to get into their clique. There's a lot of shade that can be thrown. It's a nice area. It's like a suburban area for black people who are kind of stuck up. <laughs> They're kind of stuck up, but they can still be hood. You feel me? Put it this way. I can see why the writers made the dying and dash bitches who left Issa hanging with the check girls from PG County. I'm just saying. Y'all can fight me on this too. Fight. But let's not, because PG County girls will fight you. <laughs> And then also I was wondering when they were in the restaurant in the bathroom, did they put toilet paper down on those seats? Did they line the toilet seat with toilet paper? Cause I feel like I missed that. I hope so. One good thing about Issa's encounter with the girls from PG County 
is that it caused her to define what she actually does for a living, like what her profession actually is. And she calls herself a cultural curator. I definitely like the sound of that. I was like, damn, I, I want that job. <laughs> Where do I apply? <laughs> so you're basically the plug. I think that's a job that they need to have. Like, is this something new that you think we should start thinking about as a serious profession? Cultural curator. So many things you can do with that, I feel like. It definitely made her feel like she was that girl. Which happened to be my favorite song from this episode soundtrack. I know she felt good about like coming into a clean apartment, you know, trying to start off this new chapter right. Something about being in a clean space just helps your mind. And uh, that song was coming on like she's that girl. Yes. Along with helping people, Issa also went to her mom for clarification in terms of who she is as a person. And that is where she finally broke down about everything going on with Molly. It ain't nothing like a mother's hug. Sometimes you just need a mom's hug and a mom's touch and she knows, you know? That hug from mama, whoo, Lord. I'm missing that right now. I'm missing my mama's hug in this quarantine and my grandma. <laughs> I think when Issa's mom says she admires her, that is the clarification that Issa needed. Also, a lot of people had things to say about Issa's mom, who's played by Wendy Raquel Robinson. They didn't really like Wendy playing her mom during the Thanksgiving episode, and some people were saying how she looked too Hollywood. How do you guys feel now, in this new episode, episode six, when Wendy comes back as Issa's mom and you see that bond and you see that, that, that time they had to connect. How do you feel about Wendy playing Issa's mom now? At the end of this episode, Issa sees Molly in a restaurant and decides not to go in. From her point of view, it looks like Molly's inside the restaurant on her phone, not having a care in the world, not even caring about the fight that they just had. So she doesn't go in the restaurant, whereas Issa, she's been in turmoil, crying with her mother, trying to prove to strangers she's a good person because of the things that Molly has said. When it comes to this friendship, do you think Issa made the right move by not going in there and approaching Molly? Where does it stand now? Is their friendship seasonal or is it reasonable at this point? The last thing I want to talk about is something that grinds my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? And I'm sorry, Issa, but the length of these episodes are way too short. It always leaves you wanting more. I don't know if that's what you guys are doing, but it's a total tease, man. This is giving me mental blue balls, bro. Well. Can we make the episodes a little bit longer, please? And I wouldn't request this if it wasn't for the fact that even the podcast dedicated to Insecure is longer than the actual episodes. Insecurity, the podcast, is like 45 minutes long. And Insecure episodes are like 28 minutes long. Like what gives? How, how does that make sense? So please think about it because I, you know, honestly, I'm ready to start a petition. I'm about to find out who's with me. Yeah, and in the next episode, episode seven, it looks like Molly and Andrew are embarking on a vacation, I believe to Mexico, and we'll see how that goes. Until next time.